All right, welcome everybody to a wonderful week of Power 10 Sports Talk. Um, we're recording this a little later in the day, so you won't get it until Sunday. But I am joined always with my little brother, uh, Brady's face now, Brady Gibb. Oh, God. <laughs> and our special guest is a three-sport athlete at Dover, did basketball, football, and baseball, went on to play football at Ball, Ball State before switching over to baseball, gets drafted in the second round by the Philadelphia Phillies, ends up on the Cleveland Indians and the Baltimore Orioles before retiring, ends up becoming the now executive director for the Rainbow Connection. Wonderful guy, huge heart, just funny as could be, Percy Gardner. Wow. Uh, I hope you believe all those things and then just try to be nice. <laughs> oh, no, that definitely wasn't me kissing ass. Speaking of kissing ass, however, um, Arizona T, I'd like to give you an offer. We're going to start stuff early. If you sponsor our podcast, I will get a tattoo of a full can of one of your teas on one of my ass cheeks if you sponsor the show. <laughs> this is not a joke. If you sponsor the show, full can on one of my cheeks. Oh, my gosh. Now that's, that's, now that's kissing up. <laughs> it is. It is. Oh, link in the description. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, message us on uh, Twitter or Facebook if you want to get details. <laughs> All right, um, before we get started real quick, um, happy birthday to Peyton Gardner, Percy's uh, daughter. Yeah. How was she out too? All yeah. right. And uh, baseball also, reference. Yeah, before we get started, I would like to say, uh, whenever Percy got dropped, whenever he came to the Indians, me and my buddy got so excited to see him play and just have merch because he's a Dover guy. We went and got Percy Gardner jerseys who then a week later ended up getting cut by the Indians and joining the Orioles. It was about <laughs> a one week time span between the events happening. I think I got yeah. the jersey in the mail and you were already on a different team. Yeah. Well, the thing is, let's, let's rearrange those words. So I look better. <laughs> I did not resign with the Indians and then I signed with the Orioles. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it was your decision to not stick with the team that you had exactly. loved since childhood. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. All right. But uh, all right. So we'll get into the news and then we'll kind of get into the questions we have for you and about baseball in general. Uh, NFL proves a 17 game season. That's got to be exciting. It'll push the Super Bowl back another week, but it's another week of football that we all get to look forward to. Uh, fun fact about it. The Chicago Bears and the New York Jets are the only two teams in the 16 game era to never have a quarterback throw for 5000 yards. And in the past three seasons, Kansas City has had a quarterback that has almost done it twice. The fact that Mahomes is out for two, years, two games this season is the only thing that stopped him. So oh. just a quick reminder of how bad those teams are at quarterback. I mean, you said the <laughs> Jets? The Jets and the Bears. They had a five-star recruit, Mark Sanchez. What are you the talking The Sanchez, about? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, man. Next bit of news, Kansas men's basketball extends their coach, Bill Self, to a lifetime contract. It's essentially a five-year or rolling five-year contract that's $5 million a year based off what I saw. So, I mean, good for him. Gets to play, do the rest of his career with a great organization. I don't know about lifetime contracts, though. That's a really bold move. I think the Indians should have gave me one. <laughs> yeah, they should have done that. That is their loss. Looking at the roster now and kind of like, who the hell are these guys? At least I could see your name and be like, we're still going to be terrible, but at least I know the name on the list. Well, it would have been nice to be a part of this bullpen instead of the one I was a part of. <laughs> oh, because you would have gotten more play time. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> You've been a starter in this current lineup. <laughs> I don't know. They got some good young I know Mackenzie's good and Shane Bieber. I know those two names. Yeah, Police Sackey with the Ball right. State. I didn't Cardinals know who that was <laughs> until I looked him up. I forgot about him. <laughs> you knew Zach Police was? I forgot he existed. Today. It was one of those situations where I just forgot. They weren't a big enough name for me to be like, yes, retain that information. Well, didn't we oh, all forget who was it on, on the Indians or Yeah, something? I got I to gotta put it on now. Uh, yeah, right now the Indians not looking great. We're not going to talk about it. There's a lot of games left. And uh, there was this Cleveland sports commentator that uh, decided to go off on somebody. That, <laughs> that was two hilarious. Games. And it was – he really was just like, you You aren't a fan. You should just stop watching if you're going to say they're terrible. An idiot and he was stupid. I 
it's a bold move to go on TV and say it. It's even bolder to do it first game in when it's 30 degrees and snowing sideways. <laughs> but uh, wow. last bit of news before we get into these questions, I think we've come up with for Percy. Uh, Roy Williams retires after 33 years of coaching college basketball, oh. 900 wins, uh, top three all time in wins. I mean, you got to wonder if you're a UNC fan, who you're going to get next and if it's going to be good or if the rest of us get to kind of rejoice the fact that UNC is finally terrible. I'm not Vince th- Carter, Vince Carter. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I, I have nothing against UNC as a college. I am against UNC because of the fans, because some of them are very obnoxious. And I've, I've yet to meet a very humble fan from UNC. It's hard to be humble, though. Yeah. Oh, oh, I know. I will open the mail. Ohio State. State. Yeah. (laughs) Ohio State fans, we're pretty bad about stuff too. So we can't exactly be like, oh, we're 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 not too bad. We're terrible. Outside of Ohio, we are terrible people. (laughs) All right. So uh, we'll kind of get into these questions for you. I got a little bit of background I pulled from Wikipedia because, uh, you know, I gotta I gotta see if you remember some of this stuff as well as the internet does. So, do you remember all of the teams you've played for? As in minor league teams? We'll include minor league, yes. Yes, I do remember all the teams. We'll see if Wikipedia is correct. And who's yeah, under all right. Uh, so, I played for the Williamsport Crosscutters. All right. I played for the Clearwater Threshers. All right. The Reading Fighting Phils. All right. The Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the Lynchburg Hillcats. All right. And the Akron Rubber Duckies <laughs> and the Columbus Clippers. All right. And we already brought up the other three major teams. So yes. that was actually part of it was see if you could remember and it almost become part of a trivia. But the next part I do have is trivia. It's going to be, is this a real affiliate team or did I make it up? <laughs> First, uh, I would just give you the mascot. I'm not going to give you a location because that might help you out. It might make it really easy or really hard. Yeah, first up, probably. we got. First up, we have the biscuits. Is it a real team or is it fake? One hundred percent real. Am I affiliated in this? Yeah, Brady. Is it is the biscuits real or? Oh, I'm gonna let Brady go first. Yeah. Then, I just <laughs> no, it it's not. No. Oh, the biscuits. I the show it, too much. It is. The biscuits, one hundred percent a team. It is a real team in Montgomery, Alabama. Yeah. Next up, the Aardvarks. Is that even a real thing? Yes, that is a real, a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> There's a book called The Awful Aardvark. Aardvark. Come on, I'll read some books. Yeah, Arthur you. the Aardvark. Come on. It's <laughs> you think I pay attention yes. in language arts? <laughs> <laughs> um, the Aardvarks, I'm going to say no. Not no. real. All right, Brady, you're not saying it's real either? It is fake. I did make that up entirely. Open up the dictionary, first thing that showed up. So, <laughs> Next up, we have the screwdrivers. Is it real or is it fake? Yeah, Never heard of that, too. Yes. Ray, you're saying it's real purse. You're saying it's not because you haven't heard of it? Yeah. It is fake. I made that one up as well. I was like, that one might be enough to maybe trip you up that it's just a random object. There's one that's really silly, and I, I want to see if it's a real team. But oh, I, I, I found some of the gems. <laughs> Next up, we got the Skeeters. Is it real or is it yes. fake? Yes, it is. I'm yes. going to say yes, but I don't know. It is real, 100%. It is <laughs> yeah. in Sugarland, Texas. And oh, up- that team actually wanted me. That was really? a, that's a that's a non-affiliated team. That is a professional team, but they are independent. Oh, I think well now they believe they are affiliates now. Oh, with who? Oh um, yeah, because it all changed. Yeah, a bunch of stuff got reworked. I believe they're with the Texans. I believe the they're what? The, I believe they're with the Rangers. Rangers. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, uh, Deshaun Watson doesn't play baseball. <laughs> nah. <laughs> He probably, he probably should at this point. He's not getting anything done with Houston. Yeah. But, yeah, I believe they are a Rangers affiliate. Okay. All right, next up, the Jumbo Shrimp. Is it real or yes. did I make it up? I don't know. It has to be somewhere from Florida, so I'm going to guess That's a real no. team. <laughs> the look on your face is I don't know if it is, but if I say it boldly enough. <laughs> so, Brady, what are you going with? Is it real no. or real? It is, it is a real team. Jacksonville, Florida has the Jumbo Shrimp. Okay, oh, well, they is, used it, to be called, is it with the, used, is it with the Marlins the, or the Rays? Yeah, the Marlins. They used to be called the Suns, right? Yep, it is with the Marlins. Mm. All right, they used next to be called up, the Jacksonville Suns. Love it. All right, next up, the House Cats. 
We have hill cats, we have mud cats, we have river cats. Are there house cats? No, you made I'm that gonna up. Say, I'm going to say no, but... I did make that one up. Uh, <laughs> well, it's like, there's enough cat teams. Maybe they'll fall for I it. I think I've played against all of those cat teams, too. All right. Against yeah. the Fisher cats. Yeah, the Fisher yeah, cats. Yeah, I played against That's the Fisher cats. A, there's another New one. New Hampshire. All right, Fine next squirrels. up, we got the Shuckers. Is the Shuckers <laughs> a real team, or did I make it up? I don't know. Honestly, That's not an answer. Probably... Yeah, yeah, the John Socko Clause says you got to give a definitive answer. Uh, no. You got to no first? I'm going to say no as well. It is a real team in Biloxi, Louisiana. This is oh. real. Yeah. All right. Uh, I got three more. So don't worry. This won't go on for too much longer. Uh, next up, we got the Isotopes. Is it no. real or that did is I a, make it up? That's a real team. Brady? It is. It is a okay, real team. I'll, it's I'll in I'll Albuquerque, yes. New Mexico. Come on, play some MLB The Show, Brady. What I do. I'll, I was playing before you got on. Coming, <laughs> coming to uh, Xbox Game Pass. I April know. 20th. I, I might actually play crazy. it. I think last one I played on Xbox was like, oh, it, it wasn't the, the show. 2K, right? Just it would have been MLB something on like the original Xbox, like the OG Xbox. It was 2K. All right. All right. I got two left. Next up, the Wampus Cats. Is it real or did I make it up? And if either of you know what a yes. wampus cat is, I will be impressed. I do not. But cat I'm lives say... in a womp. Well, not a womp. A swamp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it's not a real team. Hey, right, Brady's saying it's real. You're saying yes. it's not. It is not real. A wampus cat is a mythical Native American monster that is essentially a cougar with six legs. I can't believe I said womp yeah. instead of swamp. All right, and the last one, tornadoes. Is it real or did I make it up? Yeah, we go to that school. Is it a real MLB affiliate team? I'm going to yes. say no. Yes, yeah, Oklahoma something. It is not. Close, everybody. There is the uh, Oklahoma Good City thinking. Storm Chasers. Oh, storm there are chasers. Cyclones and Storm Chasers, so, but no tornadoes. Had to shout out our uh, alum, not alum, and I guess Brady's current, the Dover Tornadoes with it. I'm surprised you didn't say the Yard Goats. I saw that one and I was like, ah, I knew that I, I'll wrong. find the I more obscure ones because I was like, I know that they'll see Yard Goats and be like, definitely real. It's too <laughs> weird for him to, to not have been real. So in, in line with the mascots, what is the weirdest mascot you saw in your career? Obviously, you guys play a lot of these weird ones. What was the, not the actual mascot, but kind of the naming with it? Because there are the Skeeters, the Bees, uh, the Isotopes, the Shuckers. I would say, I'm going to have to say the team that I p- played for, the Iron Pigs. We would have, we had actually bacon uniforms. Oh, <laughs> that is a pretty good one. I, I would buy one of those. <laughs> my, my brother's into collecting all the minor league stuff too, but. The Iron Pigs, uh, great stadium, Coca-Cola Park, great crowd and everything, but I definitely a unique experience being on the team. Yeah, you yeah, also got never... to play with the rubber ducks as well, which isn't like a normal one to see either. But their logo was actually kind of cool. And it made sense since, you know, R- Akron, Rubber City and stuff like that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, okay, I'll keep it going with questions, Brady, if you want to kind of chime in with the ones you got. Uh so this one I was kind of my uh, mom decided, had me ask for you. Um, life after baseball and after all the playing, are you enjoying life afterwards? And uh, do you have any plans of kind of coaching in baseball or football currently? So I am really enjoying life after baseball. Um, I love baseball, loved all the time, love all the friendships, the relationships I made. Um, but uh, you know, my struggles and, you know, not always putting my best self out on the field really took away from the experience overall. Um, but loving life after helping people, Rainbow Connection, um, you know, we're, you know, working out in the community has been great. Um, I don't know if I'll get into coaching as a team wise. I may make more time for the individual coaching like I used to. Um, I haven't decided yet, but right now I'm finishing my degree. So All that's right. why it makes it a little wait, rough Am I going to have a degree <laughs> before you? Will I have a college? Wait, I mean, I already have a college degree sitting by me. It's an associate's degree, but. Mm, no, I'm joking. Yeah, <laughs> it's an associate's <laughs> going, of arts. I'm going for yeah. bachelor's and I should have mine um, after this fall semester. 
Oh, sick. Wait, through Ball State, or are you transferring? No, unfortunately back? not. I really wanted to, to graduate from Ball State, but um, in my contract when I signed with the Phillies, uh, it just didn't work out. Ball State doesn't do my major the way I want it online and Chris is not going to let me go back to campus for some reason yeah and uh, <laughs> I wonder so why she I'm, doesn't want you going back to Indiana <laughs> so I'm uh I'm actually going to graduate from Northeastern which is right by Harvard so I might walk over to Harvard and act like I graduated from there <laughs> take the pictures at Harvard <laughs> and make everyone think it but I, I yes. know maybe you're going to graduate from Kent State we could just sit next to each other for commencement <laughs> no I, I hold a grudge against Ohio State and Kent State because uh Kent State didn't recruit me at all, so. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, they already had Julian Edelman there, so they didn't need you. <laughs> That's not true. But baseball, too. All right, yeah. And, well, and Julian Edelman, we beat them at Ball State. He wasn't even really a quarterback. Yeah. Well, yeah but he so was you amazing. We had a, lo- a third 28 against them, and he ran for 40 yards and got the first down. I was like, who the heck is this dude? So you played against Edelman. So you would have also played against Sean McVay then. No. Oh, he was a coach? No, he was a player at the same time Julian Edwin was. So when Kent what? when Edwin was a quarterback at Kent State, um, McVeigh was I can't remember which position he played. I have to look this up real quick. But yeah, he was a player at the same oh, time. Oh I did not know that. All right, and all right, uh, youngest coach for- at 30 years old. So uh, he played at Miami. Oh, uh, Cole, Those, but, that was our rival team. Yeah, 2005, 2006, 2007. He was a wide receiver for Miami. Well, I went there. I didn't. I guess I would have played the fall of 2007. So, yeah, that you would have been my redshirt red, year. Yeah, you had a redshirt freshman against Sean McVay in his last year before leaving. Nice. So, nice. look at that. Look at that. You played against Julian Edwin and Sean McVay. Yeah, but if we want to trump those names, Larry English. And uh, dang, I forget the other dude from Buffalo. Big dude. He plays at uh, for the Oakland Raiders. He had a lot of money. <laughs> Defensive dude. Are you talking about? Is it Khalil Mack? Yes, Khalil Mack. He's with the Bears. Oh. <laughs> uh, who was with the? Was he with the Raiders? He's been with the Raiders for oh, years. Okay. Yeah, he's been with the Bears the past three years. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's all good. Just disregard me saying that. That's all right. We won't judge you. All right. So, yeah, Brady, I'll let you ask some of your questions. Oh, okay. Well, my first one was, uh, what was your favorite pitch to throw? Early on my career, curveball. Once I learned how to pitch, my sinker, by That's far. That's what I thought. All right. I'll have to send you clips of me uh <laughs> Throwing, throwing my net, one of my couple of my nastiest sinkers. Like, it's right. Brian Bucks. Don't try and do it now. You'll probably hurt yourself. <laughs> That's why you're an no, old arm man. is still good. Arm is still good. Body's not though. I'm working out though. I'm getting back in shape. Watch out. Right. So am I. I'm making a I'm comeback. Not in shape. Yeah, I, I heard you were doing spin classes at 5.30 in the morning from... Uh, yeah, that's too early. I had to stop doing that. I, that's what I told her. I was like, yeah, 5.30 in the morning ain't going to happen for me either. No. All right, so what all songs did you have out as walkout music? Um, just go off of your affiliate, and I don't know if they do it in college or not, so just your affiliate and pro career. Well, yeah, college, they did it in college, but my coach actually stole my limelight because his walkout song played the first inning, and I got mine the second, which I think was kind of bogus. But I played, so I walk out some, some T.I., a song you guys probably are going to know. Uh, but it was called, T- it was, it was T.I. And it was called, um, um, tell him I said that. And right. then once I got to pro ball, my first song that I walked out to was I'm on one by DJ Khaled and Drake and all them. But all I had right. to go in and edit all the cuss words out myself. <laughs> <laughs> Being an affiliate, you have to edit out the, your own cuss words from your walk. Yes. Music. Minor leagues, they don't really give you a lot of the amenities. <laughs> Um, I actually made a lot of walkouts for all my teammates at Williamsport. All right. Um, and then my second year, I walked out to uh, Headlines by Drake. All right. Solid one. I just right tweeted there. about that on tweet <laughs> on Twitter <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> uh, I had and then I got into gospel music after that. So Awesome God was my walkout for the next, I don't know, five years. And then it was Sidelines by Lecrae. All right. That's a pretty solid lineup. 
Pardon was hoping you would say Big Papa. <laughs> that is not a remark about your weight now. <laughs> but that's just a quality like walkout song. It is. is there anything but you wish Tristan you McKenzie, made? That's, his, that's his song. All I don't right. know if that's his walk up now, but that's yeah, I know his song. one of the bullpen guys for the Indians now does come out to Wild Thing and wears 99 still. And oh, I do Lord. appreciate that. Yeah. I hear re- I can't <laughs> even I don't know how to say his name, so I'm not gonna say who. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I've seen it in writing, not gonna try and guess at all. We're not gonna do that. It's probably best that you didn't see it yeah. in writing. Was there any was there anything song you wish you would have had as walkout music? Um I would say, which it would have been impossible, one of the songs now that I like a lot was from Kanye's Sunday Service Choir. It's called right. Father Stretch. Really loved that song. I would have loved that one. Other than right, that, so, I was pretty happy with my choices. All right. So, Brady, what what is your walkout music going to be? As somebody that is pitching and hopefully has a wild thing, because I can't it. control anything. Well, yeah. Hey, audience. That's not a good thought Percy process did, to have, Brady. Yeah, Percy did coach him for a hot second there. Maybe that's where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was never, wild, too. Yeah. I was wild, too. <laughs> I didn't ever pitch. I was terrible at baseball. I, did, I was a soccer guy. So I'd have to go with Across the Nation by uh, Union Underground. It was the old uh, raw theme music back yeah. in like the mid 2000s, probably whenever you would have been starting like college. It was the song they started all the raw shows with. Just okay. a quality one to go with because people would hear it and be like, where have I heard that for? I'd have no clue. And then it just brings back <laughs> of them like my like being young like oh man it's so weird to hear it now i will tell you the the walkout that really got me excited had nothing to do with my team or me and i was jealous but it actually has something to do with the team behind you we were playing in a tournament in coastal carolina and i think his name was something iglesias he was like their four hitter packed house and it was the first time I heard all I do is win and the whole crowd did the hands up (laughs) and they stay there. It was the first time I heard the song and I had goosebumps. I was like, yeah, that was nasty. (laughs) I really, part of it was like, whenever you said the name of Iglesias, I was like, Oh, he's going to say gasolina. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, Oh, all the swag in the world. And then that walkout came on and the crowd was into it. I was so jealous. All right. That's a pretty quality one. All right. So my next question who was the best player you struck out? It's between – it's going to be between J.D. Martinez, Jose Altuve, Carlos Correa. And I think those are the, the best. There's some other dudes that were, that were good. But I'll say you know, Altuve think, but, because he's a dirty cheater. So we'll say that's the <laughs> best one. Well, him, that was, I kind of like had him all off the wall. Like he was nowhere near. Well, he didn't have the trash cans yet. Otherwise he would have went yard. <laughs> no, off. we were playing in Cleveland. So we oh, okay. <laughs> There's no trash cans to be banging on. All right. That leads me into the next question. Who is the best player that went yard on you? I know you didn't forget all of them. You had to have retained, like, oh, man, this dude just smacked a homer off me, and I'm never going to forget it. So no big leaguer hit – well, I'll say Russell Brandon hit one off me. That's a name you'll know, but that's not the best player. All right. The best player that hit a home run off of me, I'm going to have to say Derek Dietrich because, to be honest, this is not like a (laughs) – A humble brag. I didn't give up many home runs, so (laughs) – yeah, that's what it started sounding like. Back to minor leagues, I had to go all the way back to minor leagues because I didn't give up any home runs in the big leagues. And, um, yeah, it was Derek Dietrich. He, I hung a change up. And he just and, went yard on it? Oh, no, I'll, I'll say Javi, Javi Baez. Javi Baez. That's a, that's a pretty quality one to have hit a home uh-huh. run off yet. Was it the 2016 run? With uh, no, they no, no, it wasn't that it was in the minor leagues. Uh, was it like a year <laughs> I hung or two the up then? And it, <laughs> one of my friends was in the stands holding a drink, and it, it landed almost by him. He got scared. <laughs> All right, uh, Brady, I'll let you give your next one. Uh, fastest he's ever thrown. <laughs> if you don't say 99 miles per hour, I'm gonna be disappointed. <laughs> it, it is 99 miles per hour, unfortunately. Um, my cousin slash mentor bet me 
well, not bet, but he just said, hey, if you throw 100, I'll give you $1,000. And that was a lot of money to me in the minor leagues. That's a lot of money to me now. What are you talking about? If I could hang 100 at any point, I'd be like, sweet, $1,000, yes. <laughs> but I couldn't do it. We were in Columbus where the radar guns are very visible to the pitcher. And we, I couldn't hit 100. I hit 99 those games, that game, and I was, that was the best I ever felt. I was slinging the ball, almost fell down a couple times. That's how hard I was trying to throw. And uh, it was a really good game. There was, like, no action on it. You are just, like, put some heat on it and break 100. It was still the sinker. That was the best. That was – it was weird. Usually four seam is the fastest uh, – Your sinker to throw. was all right. Yeah, you don't yeah, hear about a breaker really being a fastest pitch well. off now. Yeah, I couldn't throw my four seam that hard. It was weird. I didn't spin it right. But my two seam, my sinker, I was really – I was good at spinning that one. All right. And for people that don't know, Percy does have a podcast, 99 miles per hour. <laughs> I'm still trying to find a way to get on it. He always has really big people on. So maybe that's why we haven't made it yet. Hey, Percy, we are going to be on part of a car at Midvale. You will see Power 10 Sports on a car at Midvale. For real? Yeah, I had to do the logo today. But uh, that's what's up. Everyone else, yeah, um, we will be part of a Midvale car. Is the driver, I believe the driver plays baseball with Brady. Oh, that's what's up. So now we're making it big now. So, hey. so now we're big enough for, for us to make it on 99 yet? Yes, yes, you are. We just got to we gotta plan it out. I got I got some good plans coming up for my show. I might be doing a ride along with the sheriff. Oh, boy. That should be, yeah, that should be fun. But we're, it was supposed to be a surprise, so. Don't worry. Nobody what? watched this anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will give a spoiler. We also have a big guest coming on. You might know him. Devin Torrance, uh, oh, he will I do be on in a couple him. weeks. He, I've uh, known him if, for a long time. If you want to rag on him now, now's your chance because I'm pretty sure he'll come right back for you whenever he's on in a couple weeks. Uh, one of the most – he's either one or two most athletic pers- uh, people that I ever played with. Um, early on, he was afraid of the ball. <laughs> and uh, – yeah, he's one of the hardest workers ever, too. He just, he made himself a switch hitter. He basically built a cage in the back of his yard so he can learn. And he went, He always goes the extra mile. He's still probably training to be a professional athlete somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to have him on. I think uh, the, our other hosts who couldn't make it today are excited to have him. I think that maybe because he is an Ohio State alum, and they, and they both are soon to be Ohio State alum. Oh, nice. All right. So uh, – Back into the question, back into the questioning. Uh, my next one, if you weren't a pitcher, where were you planning on playing position-wise on the field? I played third base. That was probably the only other spot I could play, that or first, <laughs> first or third. Those are the two really... spots you had. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I never played first, though. I only played third and pitched, but wasn't fast enough to play outfield, even though in the big leagues, if you get at home runs, you don't really have to run down balls but yeah first or third probably all right um i'll incorporate one of the questions that i got from our co-host john Sacco, who sadly couldn't make it um your favorite team building experience whether it be in cleveland or in the minors hmm i would say i would say it was in cleveland i had i was surprised at how we were a team and a family in Cleveland. I was not expecting that. I thought once you got to the big leagues, you kind of were on your own plan and you just would come together in the game and play together. Like you show up at five o'clock, play the game, everyone goes home and you see each other practice the next day. Well, I know we had baseball and minor leagues. I know it wasn't too different. I knew we still had to get to the field at noon and do all your little practices, but I just thought, everybody would be kind of secluded in their own thing. Everyone had their own personal trainer and stuff like that, you know, but it was not like that. The Indians had a good training staff. We all ran like the same. We had relievers had different plans for what they were doing. It was just amazing. And we all like, it was weird. We're like a college team. We all gave fives after we were done running. And it was just, um, it, it was something, especially when we clinched in Detroit, you know, Andrew Miller was like, you know, go over there and celebrate with your team. He was encouraging me, and um, it was just fun, man. They, they, There was no one on the team that was, you know, a butthole or anything like that. Everybody was nice and just wanted me to have the best experience while I was up there. All right, that's always good to know. All right, so um, 
I guess my next one. Did you ever get to do opening day? Whether I don't think it ever was with the Phillies, Indians, or Orioles that you got to be part of opening day. But even with the affiliates, were you ever the opening day pitcher? And what was that like? Oh, wait, let me think. I don't think I was. Um, I definitely did not get a part to be a part of opening day for um, for the Indians or Phillies or Orioles. But I don't think I was an opening day starter because I was only a starter with the Phillies. Even an opening day reliever, that's still – I still feel like that's a pretty big uh, deal. I might have been in, uh, in Akron. All right. And what was that like? Was it just kind of, it felt like a normal game or was there added pressure because it's opening day and you kind of got to make that statement to start off the season? I think, I don't think there was more pressure from outside sources. It was more pressure internally and just thinking about, you know, you're kind of nervous about the new season, excited, uh, stuff like that. And uh, you get to kind of, it's a new slate, you know, nobody remembers like, Hey, you pitched terrible your last game last year no it's a it's a new slate and you're ready to you know kind of write your your, your yeah, ticket for get, that year, get so. the ball rolling and, ha- and kind of come off on the wrong foot yeah all right so the next two i have are kind of more whenever you're not playing my first one is so most teams have a four or five man rotation and what happens in the off days so let's say you are shane bieber pitches opening day where does he what does he do game day for all of those off days before he starts again? So I would say that the most work is actually the day after you pitch. So I would probably condition for about 30 minutes and do a heavy lower lift uh, the day after. And then you would kind of be in your cleats sitting in the dugout. With the Phillies, you always had to wear cleats no matter what. Even if you, even if there's no chance you're going to touch the the field, you still have, that's weird, but you had to deal with the data. So (laughs) Nice that is clean, true. Yeah. That is true. Um, not at that time, though. I was holding out for Nike, but oh. uh, they never they never came to the table. But um, and then the next day after that is your bullpen day. That day you do a little upper body lift. Um, I'm not sure that if this is Bieber's schedule. This was my schedule as a starter. Just as but it's something about it. Yeah. yeah. So you're just going to lift in all those days and kind of train still. Yeah, the day before, you're not going to lift. You're going to probably take it easy. Um and you only do sprints as you're conditioning, um, as opposed to the other days where you're doing a little bit longer, you know, cardio no, you, work. Yeah, cardio and other calisthenics along with lifting. Yeah. Yep, and you're always a part of the team activities except the start day. Starters get to come to the field later. Everyone else shows up to the field about noon, even though the game's not till seven, and they have to eat their meals and prepare their body, get their body ready by the training staff. So, um, but yeah, the starters get to show up at 4.30 <laughs> on those days. They get to kind of relax and kind of go through their own motions. Mm-hmm. I, but yeah, I didn't know if like come, let's say, so tonight, uh, Monday, Tuesday, if Bieber is just kind of, yeah, he sits in the bullpen, if he sits in kind of like the stands and like first row or something, or if he's in the dugout, or if he just kind of chills inside the locker room. That's kind of what I was wanting to know is what happens oh, okay. in game so- time for somebody that's kind of now, even relievers that like, hey, you're going to take an off day because you pitched last night. I know so what in, the protocol in, was. In the minor leagues, you're in the stands charting the other starter two days out of the, the three to four days that you're off. And in the big leagues, you're never going in the stands because you're usually like a big name. So Yeah, everyone starters, knows your name, so it's kind of <laughs> keeps away from the public. <laughs> yeah, starters are in the dugout. Relievers are always in the bullpen no matter what. Different clubs have different laid-back rules. I know if in Columbus – there was no bullpen, so they made the field without a bullpen because someone made a mistake. And uh, huh. I would go back in the clubhouse, eat peanut m and hang out, watch the game on the TV, you know, relax on days that I didn't think. But I actually got called into a game. I didn't have my belt, didn't have my jersey on or nothing. <laughs> I had to run back to the clubhouse get all my stuff on and go pitch. Let's just say it was not a great game. Not well received. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So my other question about whenever you're not actually pitching, let's say you are going in, you're the reliever in the seventh inning, you put up three, put down three, you're up to your team's up to bat and you kind of get them grumbles in your stomach and you got to go to the bathroom. 
do you have to hold it or is it kind of haul, haul ass to the nearest bathroom, go and hope you're back before your team retires your hitting squad? So there's usually a bathroom in the dugout. You, I would say most people would go try to release that demon. But All right. if you're not done, when the time time comes, no one's waiting for you. Yeah. So you're either going to take up your warm-up pitches or – you're or just, somebody's you're coming in for you and you're done. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be out on that field no matter what. There's no, oh, he's taking a dump. No, it's. <laughs> yeah. Did that gotta, ever happen that, to you? <laughs> it's It never happened to me. Um, luckily, the only time it would have happened to me is days when I was a reliever because on start days, I would in the day before start, I would always eat the same thing. So I knew how I'd feel. You had your routine built up. Yes, but as a reliever, there's been scary moments, but never that moment where you're like, this is emergency, this is coming out either way. This is, I'm wearing white shorts, <laughs> I'm wearing white pants tonight, oh no. <laughs> yes, that happened during uh, football in high school during a practice. Oh, but I'm sure I'm Ifs love that. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, and oh, another Lordy. question John has, um, so uh, – Outside of Cleveland and Philly and Baltimore, I believe they're all AL, correct? I, I'm terrible with remembering no, AL and NL. Philly's, Philly's NL. All right. So, would you have rather played in the AL or NL because of the NL having pitchers hit? Would you have been like, please keep me in the AL? I don't want to go to bat or be like the NL. I think I could get a hit off or two. I would say I want to stay in the AL, but I was afraid of hitting until I got – so I got some at bats under my belt and I got a little bit more confidence, but I'm not afraid of a fastball, but when that ball spins and they start throwing curveballs and sliders, I have no chance. So I'd rather someone knows what they're doing hit for me. <laughs> yeah. You're like, all right, somebody whose entire job is to hit, please do this for me. I don't want to try <laughs> and hit. And especially because you know, the level you're playing at going, I don't think I could hit my curveball. I don't think yeah. like I could hit my own curveball mm -hmm. and I have to go off somebody chance. else. Um, all right. Uh, next question I have is from my other brother, Aaron. So with uh, pitching, there's about a point, what, point seven time span from it leaving your hand to the hitting the catcher's mitt at around that 90 mile to 100 mile range, right? Mm -hmm. Is it just guesswork whenever those guys are hitting or do you, obviously being on the pitching side of it, you don't know as much, but is it throw the off speed because it's a blind guess or is it they still can kind of tell you can see it so i've in my i've faced anywhere from 85 to 95 while i'm in the batter's box at pro ball and it's quick but you kind of make your decision because you're going as the pitch is coming as it's starting kind of got to be in the motion of get my arms going yeah, so you're already in the motion of hitting, and you're kind of making your decision. You know, as it gets closer, ball, can you can yeah, you hesitate yeah. enough to it be not called a swing? Yes, yes, and it's it's rough, but it's not guesswork at all. Um, I was I, okay. I don't want to say that there are some dudes who guess, <laughs> and when they guess right, because I played with Jim Tomey, and he hit a home run. He was in rehab ball. He was like hurting. He was hurt with the Phillies, and he was playing down with us minor leaguers trying to get healthy. And he hit a changeup, first pitch changeup, a country mile. And, uh, you know, players were like, hey, what was that How'd about? You know? yeah. And he was like, oh, I just thought he was going to throw a changeup, and he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the uh... hitters like Jim Tomey who can just do that, and then most of us, you are looking. So the plan should be, before you get two strikes, look for a pitch in your zone. Or if there's someone in scoring position, be a little bit more aggressive. But then once it becomes two strikes, then you're looking at something expanded and trying to just fight off until you get something you like. All right. That's where the discipline comes in, though. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, well, essentially, if you blink, it's that whole blink and you miss it with, like, but with neurons firing and, like, the amount of time it takes for your muscles to flex. It's – if you blink at the wrong time, that ball's going past you and you don't ever see it to now. True. That has happened to me before. Yeah, it's I'm like, oh, no, it's – and you hear it behind you, you're like, oh, shit, I missed that like, one. Like, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Brady, I'll let you kind of rattle some of yours off. Uh, what was your least favorite batter to throw to? 
Michael Cabrera. And if you see that at bat, the ball never crossed the plate. I threw 30 foot pitches and then we threw two intentional walk pitches after that. Oh, that's never good. No. So I, usually I was good at blocking out the the PA, but I heard his name and it, it messed me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, the other one is what is the difference in your speed between your fastball and your changeup? So, on a typical day, um, I'm not throwing 99 miles per hour. On a typical a typical day, I'm probably 94 to 97 fastball, and my changeup is usually 85, 88. All right. Um all right, so with things coming out lately about how they're deadening balls, uh, bats kind of changing and all of that, and things that Trevor Bauer has said, with foreign substances, did you ever know someone that used them? Everybody used them. That answers my next question. I was to say, I've heard the rumor, everyone uses them, and you, it just doesn't get caught because the manager doesn't want to call out the opposing team because then they'll call your guy out and both guys are suspended then. And, and I, for me, to be honest, I like, I, there was one experience I had with Pintar, my catcher in warmups outside of the game in Reading, wanted me to try it out. He wiped his glove. He didn't tell me, he kind of just had it on his glove and he and threw it back to me. And I noticed it. And, you know, I didn't like that feeling of extra, extra stickiness. I didn't like that. Just the yeah. way I, you know, pitched. I did throw the nastiest curveball ever with that, but it also did not make it to home plate. <laughs> so yeah. I never wanted any foreign substance on the ball. And I will say the only thing my whole career, I only pitched with the rosin, using rosin bag and licking my fingers. And that's about it. Um, but I, there's not one pitcher that stands out that did not use anything else. I always thought I was the weirdo for not using anything. All right. Yeah, that was something like, I guess I've seen it. And then I see Trevor Bauer made this perfect substance out of like 900 RPM to his pitch. And I'm like, that is insane. No one's ever going to hit that if they know, if they would ever allow foreign substances. Yeah, there's other pitchers that have their own. I'm not going to throw them under the bus, but there's other pitchers that have their own secret sauce as well. Yeah. But yeah, that was something I, I really wanted to know about with the whole bit, like the foreign substance, how well does it work? So obviously it, it gives you a dirty curve, but which you can't get to home plate, but you also had no experience prior to it. Yeah. Maybe yeah, if, if you, you had, it in. yeah, if you had a couple sessions with someone, you probably could at least get it across the plate and it still would be nasty on anybody. Yeah. I probably would figure out how to pitch with it, but I just never took the time. And maybe that's why I'm sitting here talking. Yeah. <laughs> Percy, why couldn't you cheat? Then this would be such a bigger deal. <laughs> All right, so we got to hear about some of the guys you went up against that, you know, smoked you, that you got to strike out. Who was your favorite teammate? Whether it be in Reading or Clearwater or Akron, who is that guy that you're like, this is my best friend? This is, like, at least, like, throughout while you're playing, you're like, this guy is going to be the guy I always hang out with. So I would say I had a few. Um I'll name a few. Harold Martinez. He was supposed to be the next A-Rod. He was supposed to be this next big thing. Things didn't pan out for him. He still was a second-round draft pick by the Phillies um, and went to Miami University. Him, Aaron Altair, who's now playing in Korea. All right. Jesse Biddle, who not, just got released by the Reds, but I think he's got other teams about to sign him. And uh, David Buchanan. He's actually playing in Korea now as well. I just spoke to him yesterday. So, I got a lot of my friends who are still playing baseball, still doing well. Um, and those are one of my closest friends from when I got drafted all the way through my career. So, yeah. Well, I didn't know if there's any guys you met while you were in the minors that you're like, you kind of met them and they had just that certain aura to them. They're really funny. Or you kind of just like, they take their religion as seriously as you do. And you're kind of like, I got to hang out with this guy as much as I can. He's just a cool dude. I kind of. All, all of them dudes basically. Ex so Biddle wasn't real religious. But we just connected on intellectual level and we always wanted to talk about pitching. And we were, I love, you know, I thought he was funny. He thought I was funny and that kind of worked out. That's because you are funny. Altair, first. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Aaron Altair, um, Harold, especially Harold. I was actually in his wedding a year after we met. Uh, but he's more of, he's an accountability partner with me. So, all right. Yeah. Um, all right. So, was there any guy that like, 
I don't want to say you avoided because obviously a lot of these guys are probably great people, but you, you kind of saw them and you're like, I don't really want to talk to this guy right now. <laughs> or there'd be like post game where you're like, I, I'm going to avoid the, the pitching guy. I just, we're going to avoid him. We're not going to talk to him. If it was the guy that relieves you, if it's the guy that kind of pitched before you that maybe was hoping for a win and you could have let him down. Was there, was there anybody post game or kind of during practice you're like, stay away from him because it's going to end up meaning that I'm in trouble. Um, well, I will say someone I did kind of avoid. Um, I pretty much like everybody. But I don't want, I yeah, just, you don't need to name names here. I it's like this you. person less. I'm, I'm a name of just because I don't dislike this person, yeah. but he is out of all the people in baseball. He is a person I like the least <laughs> <laughs> and I love him. We share a baseball card together. Oh, I'm not full of both of our rookie cards, Adam Plutko. All right, Adam Plutko. <laughs> and yeah, I saw uh, that earlier. I was trying to find your picture. picture. So I... Yeah, it was like gotta he's gonna it. have a he's gonna have a long career. He's just uh, he just signed with another team. I can't remember. Oh, I just but, saw it too. Um, great baseball he's player. He's he's gonna be a good father. He's a good husband. Uh, his wife is uh, a gymnast who went to UCLA with him. So their their child should be in. in a, actual yeah. crazy athlete as well so he's a good dude but yeah we just kind of I, I think you would probably say the same thing for me because i might have talked too much and was way too energetic for him so well sometimes you <laughs> and we share a lot too much but too. yeah <laughs> you were yeah, exactly buddies? well so when he got called up i was the only let me reword that i wasn't the person with the least amount of time ryan merritt was but you were merritt like the second the... least well, there was a couple other people. Ryan Merritt was the least amount of time, but he was in between Jason Kipnis and Michael Brantley, and they didn't want an extra person in between them. And they knew I was a nice guy, so they talked to some other people, and they came to me and said, hey, you're a nice guy, right? And I said, <laughs> what? And they said, hey, we got someone calling up. Do you mind if they split a locker with you? I'm like, nope. And Plucko was nice about it. He didn't – he literally took off, like, one-tenth of the locker. <laughs> and you had the other 90%. Yes, so I don't know if he, yeah. he doesn't like you. He's like, that, man, Percy took it 90% of the walker. I thought it'd be a 50 no, he 50 chose, split. He chose to do that. He was he thought he was being nice by doing that. Which Did he, he was, tell so. you this or were you just assuming? He told me. He told me. Okay. Okay. He goes, hey, man, I'm not going to, you know, this is all I need. I'm like, you sure? He's like, yeah, you know, it's a weird situation. I don't want to, you know, I was like, okay, I respect that. All right. <laughs> So, Krista, your wife, a lovely lady, was there any teams that you played for that she just was like, I don't like it? Like, she was just kind of not a fan? I would or was say, she just kind of like, I'm happy because you're happy? I would say when I signed, she didn't really like me playing with teams far away, but then she was very happy when I signed with the Indians. But they sent me to Lynchburg, Virginia, the only team not in Ohio. So she was kind of pissed about that. <laughs> All right. And I was too. I was too. So... I, I was trying to do some math with it. Which team were you playing for when your son Percy was born? Would it have been Lynchburg or was it? Uh, it was actually Akron? the it was actually the Clearwater Threshers. Oh, all right. And it was All Star break. I was supposed to play in the All Star game, and I was having a really good year. Um, but yeah, I decided to go see my son being born instead of playing an All Star game. <laughs> yeah, priorities there. I'm pretty sure he <laughs> definitely will appreciate that later in life. Whenever. Yes. Like, oh, yeah, like, thanks, Dad, for not missing me being born because of a baseball game. <laughs> All right. Uh, Brady, I don't know if you have any other questions. No, I'm out. I think I'm out of them, too. I actually, I think everyone might want to hear the story of you and a bag of Reese's Cups. I don't know if they, I've heard that they were the egg ones. I've also heard they were possibly the Christmas ones. But, any uh, holiday one, to be honest, yeah. is good. <laughs> but I think everyone wants to hear the story of you and a, a bag of Reese's Cups. Um, I think the story you're referring to is I got off work one day and uh, I'm probably two miles from my house. I, I looked up by, and it was about two and a half miles. <laughs> stopped by, I think, Rite Aid or something like that. And I got, because uh, I knew they had the Reese's Cups. Stopped there, got a bag of the Reese's eggs and, uh, you know, decided, you know, okay, I'm going to eat some of these on the way back home. And uh, as I'm pulling into the, the garage at home, I realize that the, there's nothing left in the bag. <laughs> so in a matter of two and a half minutes, miles, <laughs> probably a, 
I, based on what I kind of saw, and I was like trying to do my own guesstimation, it's probably a six or seven minute drive. You ate an entire bag okay. of Reese's cups. Yes, while I was driving. So, but luckily I drove safe. Uh, but my body probably was not very happy about what I just did. Consumed a lot of sugar and caffeine and fats in a very short amount of time. Yeah. Not proud of it. <laughs> that's, that's some early diabetes right there, eating a whole bag. <laughs> All right. So uh, I think I got one more. I just came up with this one. So college athletes end up, you know, having the meal plan and end up exploiting that. Was there any day, whether it be college, minors or pros, where you just ate an obscene amount of food in a short period of time? I know I have a story for mine that I definitely shouldn't have done, but I know I have my stories about like, oh yeah, I got done with a workout and just ate. And then you don't realize how much you ate until you're done. I would, I would say I had a, a full large pizza by myself and, uh, and a six inch sub. And then I had six insomnia cookies before a road trip for, oh. during Akron rubber ducks. So a large pizza, six. So I'm guessing the six inch pizza was probably from Penn station. Oh, you know, so yeah, it was a large pizza and I meant to say a six inch sub. Okay, so a large pizza, six inch sub from Subway, and six cookies. Oh my god! And you did you have to play, or was it like well, rest we, we, day? We were starting a road. We were starting a road trip. We were going on the bus. Okay, it was night. It was nighttime. We were driving right. through the night. To our next Didn't team. know if this was like <laughs> later in the day. You're still having to do something. Let's say. No, no, it was about eleven o'clock after we we just finished the game. We were going to another one. Okay. Well, like mine is, I think I did, it was after I was rehabbing my hip and a lot of other injuries. So I ran two miles and did a full chest arm workout. And my buddy's like, Hey, let's run through McDonald's because we had one right next to our dorm. And I'm like, Hey dude, I bet you 20 bucks. I can eat a whole McDonald's dinner box. For those of you who don't know, that's two Big Macs, two cheeseburgers, 20 nuggets, four small fries and a large drink. I ate the whole thing. And then had to do a four hour shift behind a desk where all I wanted to do was throw up or shit my pants. One or the other was going to happen. And I can't call anybody because of the, when the shift was, there's no one in the building. I can call it like, just sit at the desk for three minutes, please. So I just have $20 worth of McDonald's sitting on my stomach. I got, I won the uh, bet. I ate all of it. It was not great, but I ate all of it. That sounds miserable. It was not a good decision on my part. I felt good after mine. I'll let you know that. Yeah. <laughs> well, then also uh, my other brother, I think we'll have him on again sometime soon and we'll definitely record it for the show. He lost our fantasy football uh, league and I found something online called the Big Mac Mile. One lap around the track, you eat, every lap around the track is one Big Mac and you do that for a mile. He is, Pete Formans just got a couple first, second places at a track meet said, I'll do a 5K. So that is 13 laps around the track and 13 Big Macs to eat. He believes he still can do it, and I'm ready to watch him throw up <laughs> and have content oh, for this channel. That'd be great. I'd want to see that. Yeah. How many, all right, so how many laps do you think you could get in? If, so it'd be run a lap, eat a Big Mac, run a lap, eat a Big Mac. Two. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'll give myself three, and then I'm going to pass out. Like, I will not go a step further after that third Big Mac. No, no, I'll get. I'll bring my, a skateboard and drag myself to the car that way. Just lie down can, on and push. I think I can get a lap Big Mac, a lap Big Mac, and then I'll just not be able to run again. And then hit the tra and then hit the trash can. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we'll move into some actual stuff about the current baseball season and what's upcoming. Um, so your early prediction for the World Series winner? We did this last week with Matt Miller. We'll kind of reiterate our picks with it as well who did he choose the reds uh he did not he actually said the dodge the i believe he said the braves and the padres okay. i'm i'm with the dodgers i think that's ro a rotation you can't beat and i and i don't think anyone will be able to beat that rotation and that's why they're probably going to win another world series <sighs> brady if you want to give yours while percy thinks here for a sec padres <laughs> i am thinking of padres a little bit but I'm going to throw one out there. I'm going to say Mets. That is one I was kind of like, that might be my dark horse pick, but it's the one thing I can't trust a blue and red team or blue and orange team from New York. 
whether it be the Knicks, the Islanders, or uh, <laughs> yeah, the Mets. I'm like, th- th- there's history behind not being good at it. So, all right. So you're going with the Mets. All right. Uh, so do you have any guesses as to who might win the uh, Cy Young at this point, or is it a little too early to tell? History doesn't repeat itself often enough with Cy Young. I think um, you deserve one Bieber for again. sure. Yeah, I would say I think Bieber might repeat. That that that's definitely Cleveland bias, but yeah, it is. It is. It's it's. I'm throwing Bieber out there for the AL, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Bauer again. He's gonna make some great content for his channel, his YouTube channel, and he's gonna <laughs> be another Cy Young winner, man. Oh yeah, like again, it's the Dodgers rotation. It's it's tough to pick against them for anything pitching wise. Yeah, he, ba- he has a, Bauer was my uh, locker mate in Cleveland too. So all right, we didn't okay. share one but he was next to me. He was, he was next to you. Yes. All right. Um, and I think the last question I have, uh, with Lindor getting paid the amount he's getting paid at the Mets, does, is this killing the small market in, in baseball with, with uh, how the no cap works and all of that? You're now seeing, basically, if you're New York, Houston, um, LA, and Chicago, you have unlimited money to spend. If you're everyone else, you're on a fixed budget and you can't sign everybody that New York can. I think as the Mets get better, they're going to get a bigger budget and we're going to just see them become just another huge team. Well, the way I'm looking at it is the MLB is not the NBA. So in the NBA, usually the best team wins. Um, But in baseball and in football, for that matter, it's not always the most talented team wins. And I think baseball you need a lot of stuff to come together. And I think we were proof of that in 2016. Yes, we had great players. Yes, we were a great team. But in the payroll, we were like 26th out of 30. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think it can happen. But I just think there's also small market teams that don't really – they're not really – that's not really their goal. Some of the owners, they're yeah. not trying to go in. So Paul Dolan, I, think- I will say it. Well, well, we can openly say it, Purse. I have a very heavy grit of Paul Dolan. If he ever watches this show, he's probably going to, like, sue me for libel or slander or something. But I don't like him. I don't. I think he should just sell the team off at this point. But, but yeah. That, yeah, that's just, how it, that's just how it goes. I think that's the bigger problem. Um, and because and, 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 you also look at it like the, the soccer. You know, soccer, you, the, all the best players are, like, on one team for the most part. But um, I just think it's, it's, there's other stuff we have to worry about before that becomes a serious problem in my opinion. Yeah, that is, it's something that there's other problems in my opinion with baseball that need addressed before you kind of hit the cap thing, but it is something that's got, it's a looming problem because you have one or two of the small work teams, whether it be 2016 Indians, uh, the 2020 Rays. Yeah. That you don't have a whole lot of money to spend and you spend it so well and you're using it officially that you're able to assemble a great team, but then you're going to see we're now five years out from a world series visit. And there's two guys that are still on the roster yeah. and, the, and just, you know, they didn't want to re-sign Percy Gardner. So that's the biggest issue. Yeah. I mean, some, they need to be fired for that, but no, I think um, it's almost like with the Indians. Yes. There were some great players, but a lot of those players came up through the system. So I think all those teams that have success, they either get a young player in a trade for one of their superstars um, or they just draft a, a player and he pans out. And I think a lot of those teams, if you're able to develop players, then you can compete. But then you see like the Indians, you draft a Lindor, he's amazing. And then and eventually he'll leave. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the problem is that as great as somebody can be, eventually you don't have the money to resign them. So you have to kind of rely on that farm system where, the Yankees can basically just go, we'll buy him. We'll just give us the money and we'll, we'll pay him. We have no, we have no shortage of money here. Or at least with the NBA, there's that soft cap that it's kind of like, well, you can spend this amount of money and go over, but as soon as you go over, we're going to start making you pay more money. True, 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 true. Which does help. So I think that's, but that being said, the NBA is doing a lot of stuff. Great with marketing and all that new space jams coming out. And that's definitely going to help with that. the uh, audience of the NBA. I'm excited yeah. to see it. We were trying to figure out who all the, the characters were that are oh, on yeah. the, the Doom know. Squad. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, it's Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis, Davis with bird wings. Damian Lillard, that's a clock or something. Uh, I believe Clay Thompson's Clay Thompson. made out of water. 
I, and then there's some guy that's on fire. I don't know. Apparently, Chris Paul is in the movie. Awesome. I don't know where he was at in that trailer, but I'm excited for it. I think it might be better than the first Space Jam. Well, I'd say Le- LeBron's probably a better actor than Michael Jordan. That's absolutely true. <laughs> but I don't know. I think it might be that, yeah, if you go back and watch the movie with Purse tonight and with, uh, with Peyton, and then you're kind of like, man, this movie doesn't make a lot of sense. And Michael Jordan can't act. We yeah, actually like watched an hour it. And 10 we watched minutes. it, I think, last year during the, the pandemic. Well, we're still in, but I we yeah, watched it last year. Early pandemic. Like, Ooh. But it was yeah. still like, you know. But that guy, but you liked it because of the nostalgia of it, not because yeah, it was yeah, actually yeah. like this one might actually be good and it could possibly have nostalgia to it. It's true. It's true. That being said, Brady, Brady, have you watched Space Jam yet? <sighs> oh, Lordy. I'm disappointed as a brother that you haven't. How have you not watched Space Jam? It's like <laughs> top five basketball movies all time. I don't know. Like Coach Carter and Hoosiers is two. And <laughs> Isn't Glory Road up there? Glory Road, I'd give it a spot to. Then Space Jam and White Man Can't Jump. There's my yeah, top five. Yeah, White Man five. Can't Jump, yeah. I'm proof of that. I, I have no vertical. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> white as white can get <laughs> all right but uh, that's all we have for our show uh first thank you for coming on remember everyone go check out his podcast 99 miles per hour on youtube it's also available on facebook as well is it on twitter um you can follow my twitter and then i'll direct you over there all right yeah follow percy on twitter i believe it's what at percy gardner yeah it's real hard <laughs> I mean, mine's at Andrew underscore Gibbs, so I really oh, didn't okay. test the boundaries either. Yeah. Um, also, uh, as we always say, open recruitment for the show. If you're a high school, college athlete, high school, college coach, if you're just a fan of a sport that you think we need to cover, I know we still need somebody for the Indy 500. Please, if you have any expertise, reach out to our Twitter or the Facebook at Power 10 Sports. We'd really appreciate it. Um, remember, to drop a like. Leave a comment of some of your thoughts about, you know, the weird mascots that there are in the affiliate leagues. Um, your guesses as to who might win the Cy Young or uh, win the World Series. Subscribe if you really like the content and, and share with your friends. That, that helps us out more than anything. But I believe that's all we have. Remember to tune in next week whenever we have Caitlin Shut on for Masters Weekend. And I believe we will have Willie Nowak, who is a track athlete at the University of Finley, on for our discussion of who is the greatest of all time in sports. All right. Thank you. And that is all we have for you.